Phoenix Point is the next game from XCOM original creator Julian Gallup. It's earned a lot of positive and negative buzz over recent years, being one of the main successes on the FIG crowdfunding platform and their recent announcement about becoming an Epic Games Store exclusive. And while that kind of stuff will have to leave it to other people to argue, they were kind enough to give me a key to check out the latest version of the game. And what I'm seeing here is a lot of tactical strategy potential. And while it definitely does not fit the same kind of design as XCOM 2 or XCOM Enemy Unknown by Firaxis, this does feel like its own unique take on the original XCOM formula. So the footage that you are seeing here is from the play we did on stream. And remember, keep in mind, this is based on an early access backer build. So what you see will probably not represent the final version or even the current version of the game out now. But the basic story is that the world has once again been invaded by aliens. This time, they're sea-based creatures that have taken over and it's up to us to lead the resistance and strike back and do all that other XCOM style goodness that we've come to know and love. With Phoenix Point you have gameplay switch between the metagame or persistent layer of the Geoscape and of course tactile combat that you see here. At this point in time the Geoscape functionality is not fully in. So elements such as base building, research, and assembly are not in this version, but there are placeholders for those parts in the UI. As with XCOM and of course both the old and the latest ones, Phoenix Point has you commanding a small squad of characters in a you know I go you go style combat system. Your mission of course depends on the map, but generally you're going to be fighting aliens. And the first big innovation that Phoenix Point has is with the enemy designs. Typically when we play these kinds of games, the enemies are hard-coded elements. One sectoid is the same as 50 other sectoids, chrysalids, mudons, you get the picture. In this game, what they do is that the enemies are somewhat procedurally generated based on the various limbs that will get attached. It kind of reminds me in some sense to EVO, the search for Eden, that each part serves a unique function, but it also adds to the collective whole. So one crab monster may be more aggressively minded by the fact that he has two kinds of weapons for each one of his arms. I ran into a few that had a machine gun grenade launcher combo. Others may be designed to be more defensively minded, having a giant shield that will block all frontal assaults. And this is a brilliant idea, I think, in order to mix up your strategies. Because again, in a lot of tactical strategy games, once you know the best way to handle X, that's going to work every single time. But in this one, you have to actually read your opponents in order to make the best call. Another aspect that is different, and one that I really like that you're seeing here, is how action points are divvied up. As we all know, many turn-based or tactical strategy games will basically make your commands very simple. You can move or attack, and if you attack, that completely ends your turn. In Phoenix Point, you have a pool of action points. That's the yellow and blue bar you see at the bottom of the screen that's kind of being blocked at the moment. Anything that you do during your turn will eat up that bar. As long as you have enough action points that you're not in the yellow, you can attack. And many characters can attack multiple times per turn based on the weapon and class. The heavy rocketeer kind of character can really only attack once because it's a big old rocket launcher. <laughs> While characters who have smaller guns may attack multiple times. And how damage and combat plays out is also different compared to other tactical strategy games. And that is how the location based damage works. When you go to fire in on an enemy, you can zoom in and move the targeting reticle around like this. The inner ring has a guarantee or has a 50% chance to hit, while the outer ring is where the shots will always hit. And you can move this around as you see fit and target the various parts of an enemy. 
all the enemies have essentially a collective health pool, and then each part has individual health or armor. By hitting different parts of the enemy, you can disable that limb and cause massive damage or affect the enemy for the rest of the battle. If you shoot off or if you damage an enemy's leg, they won't be able to move around as easily. Hitting them in the head can daze them and prevent them from doing any kind of special powers. But the biggie is being able to disable their arms. If you destroy their arm, they are if they're holding any weapons or items, they become incapable of using them. And this creates a potential dynamic of being able to stop an enemy from being a threat. So while his machine gun may be heavily armored, his arm may not be. And if you can destroy his arm and he has no other weapons, they are literally unable to attack you for the remainder of that battle. They may still have 15, 20 more points of health due to their armor and their general body design, but if they can't attack anything, then they're just nothing. They're just dead weight on the field. And that's something that we have not seen before in a tactical strategy game. And developers have also hinted that this becomes a major role when you start fighting quote-unquote boss class enemies, which unfortunately I have no footage of that from this play. But for right now, the combat itself definitely leans more for being, I think, of a slower affair. Unlike XCOM 2, there is no turn timers or things like that, so you're free to take as little or as long as you want per map. The footage that I've played, we only ran into a few basic enemy types, nothing too crazy. But the game does feature destructible environments. And one other strategy is being able to literally blast through a wall and create an opening to destroy enemies. But after each combat, you're taking it back to the persistent geoscape layer where you're free to equip or change character loadouts and also upgrade characters. Unlike the original XCOM, there is more of that RPG or kind of like board game upgrade system of unlocking new perks for each character. And the perks themselves are categorized by their class. And you'll see the footage switch to that in a second. But every class has specific loadouts that they can use, and they can even get perks that may unlock additional weapon types as well. And you can also manufacture new ammo if you don't have any more in your store using your in-game resources. But on this character screen here, notice that you have three major stats at the top, and then you have a pool of skill points for each individual soldier, and then a global pool. And the global pool is a very interesting touch because it allows you to add to a character who may not have enough skill points themselves. This way, if you really want to upgrade somebody, you can do that, and it will cost you kind of for the collective whole. Now, here is kind of like the base layer right here, but again, I had no ability to create or modify anything. But the skills themselves, or your various perks, will unlock either new abilities, such as returning fire, run and gun, or give a character new passives, such as being able to wield a different weapon, get better crit chance or accuracy. Again, stuff that we've seen before, at least on that front. But with that said, we're going to do a quick shout out to our supporters and backers. And I'm going to talk a little bit about a few of the nitpicks that I have with the game, or at least with this current build of it. And now for a quick thank you to our Patreon backers, as well as to our current Game Wisdom sponsors. And if you'd like to continue this discussion on game design, be sure to check out our Discord channel, link down below. If you're a fan of Game Wisdom and looking for a little bit of collectible swag, anyone who donates $25 or more via Super Chat or on Patreon.com slash will get your hands on this lovely little Josh box. This is a hand-detailed box that comes with a USB drive containing 10 hours of some of my favorite podcasts done throughout the years. This is only available for the month of April 2019. Afterwards, we'll have to weigh in and see if people want more Josh boxes in the future. So if you're interested, be sure to get those donations in now before this offer runs out. 
there's certainly a lot to like about Phoenix Point right now. And again, with the game being in early access and not even, I think, like at beta yet, I can't exactly get too critical or nitpicky on it just yet. But from what I've seen so far, I think one of my concerns is that the game is very icon or symbol heavy to describe how things work or what things do, and without having a tutorial or a legend guide, it can be a little hard to follow what is going on. For the life of me, I still don't know how combat or how damage is calculated. But you see that red bar at the top of the enemy there, and it goes up or down based on where we're aiming. But I don't know exactly how damage is being calculated in terms of how much am I doing, for, and then what will that do when it hits the enemy. It's not the same as in XCOM where it will say you will do 3 to 5 points of damage. The enemy has, let's say, 6 points of health, and so on and so forth. And I think that just needs to be probably more of a UI design that may come later on. I also found the actual UI for like equipping characters and stuff like that to be a little cumbersome. You have to manually give characters additional ammo. And all ammo is carried over from mission to mission. This is not like XCOM, or I'm sorry, the Fraxis XCOM, where characters will get refitted when you send them back to base or a mission is over. If you're not careful, you could send in your squaddies into an alien base and nobody has any ammo. Now, the game also hints at being able to drive vehicles, and I don't know if they're in this build of the game, but I did not get a chance to use them, so I don't know how they play out. And like I said, the meta layer or the geoscape layer is not currently kind of like fully fleshed out yet, so I can't offer you any opinions on that. With that said, I guess the only somewhat concern that I have is that the combat may be a little too, I guess, slower paced, depending upon your own attitudes for turn-based or tactical strategy games. Again, if you, to get the most out of it, you need to spend a little extra time looking at enemies and being able to decide what parts do I need to take out. And I think, the, again, the game could do a better job conveying what are the consequences to those actions. Like, I know what happens if I shoot a guy's arm off, they can use their gun. But what if I shoot the leg, or the head, or some other crazy appendage that the developers are thinking about adding in? And like I said, a lot of this may just come with general UI enhancements and iterations. But other than that, there really isn't too much to say for right now, since really I have maybe like less than half of the game's content at my disposal. But I'm definitely excited to see where Phoenix Point develops. And like I said at the start, this does feel like its own unique spiritual take on XCOM. And if you felt that Firaxis' take was maybe a little too streamlined or simplified, you may have some real enjoyment with Phoenix Point. And there's definitely a lot of room for them to grow with post-release support or supplemental content. And like I said, if it wasn't for the fact that this game is in early access, we would be playing a hell of a lot more of it here on the channel on stream or on stream. But when it does finally get out, you know we're going to be taking a look at it more then. But we're going to wrap up this first look here now. Again, if you are interested in Phoenix Point, it is currently exclusively on the Epic Games Store, and it is in early access at the time of this recording. But I would like to thank the developers for giving me a press key to check this one out. If you're working on a game that you want me to take a look at in the future, please don't hesitate to get in touch. But check back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games. Once again, this has been Phoenix Point, and I will see you all next time.